Starship will launch again next month, according to Elon Musk. This was posted on July 28th. So yeah, he says that we could see Flight 10 in August, but how likely is this? Well, he may actually be right if SpaceX is able to pull off this static fire of Ship 37, likely for Wednesday or Thursday of this week. SpaceX even posted that Starship has been moved to the launch site at Starbase for pre-flight testing. But for some reason, they don't want to mention how incredible it is that instead of doing this at the Massey's testing site, which was unfortunately damaged and needing some major repair, they've rapidly constructed an adapter in order to be able to static fire test on the test stand. So if the static fire is successful, number one, SpaceX should get an award for how quickly they were able to make this happen. But then Ship 37 will have to head back to Mega Bay 2 for some final touches. And of course, they'll have to switch from static fire mode at the launch pad to actually launching. So we could be seeing a launch maybe about two weeks after the static fire. And remember, Ship 37 and Ship 38 are the last Block 2 ships that SpaceX has, which of course they will be testing but many of us are excited for the Block 3 starships. And Elon shared that V3 will hopefully launch at the end of the year. So while Ship 37 and Ship 38 are what's left of V2, we will likely only see a static fire test of Ship 37 for this week, and Ship 38 will likely have to be tested after Flight 10. So SpaceX will likely have to do this whole process of adapting the pad for a static fire and then a launch again. But there is a lot on the line for SpaceX, and Joe and I have said it in many of our live streams. They really want this test to go right. They have a lot of experiments that they need to conduct, and they haven't been able to do that because of the loss of, you know, the last three ships. Which, by the way, I caught up with Scott Manley recently in San Francisco. I will be releasing a much longer version of this video, but I just wanted to share some Starship insights with him. So, so let's talk just because I definitely want to ask you about, you know, Starship. I mean, oh boy, we're huge SpaceX fans. Flight 10. <laughs> I don't know. Flight 10. Allegedly, it's going to be in August. We'll see about that if they can actually do the static fire on the launch pad. Yeah. I mean, what the heck? I mean, you know, hey, it means they don't have to fix up their test site for these old uh, starships, right? Yeah, yeah true. Uh, which, you know, does mean that V3 is coming. Right, right. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's... Because V2 has been so successful, I, And I'm not necessarily sure it's because it's V2. Yeah, Like, I right. think it's they've had some bad luck. They've definitely mm -hmm. pushed through some... I mean, I think that they, they're probably going to be giving some on-the-ground training after the COPV explosion. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. But, you know, it's uh, it, these are all things that can happen if you want to move fast and break things. You break things, right? I mean, is there anything necessarily wrong with what they're doing? They kind of, this is kind of how they go. I mean, I think to a certain extent, but I think that, you know, there might be people on the ground that didn't know how to handle a COPV, and right. we saw that there was some serious consequences. Yeah, wow. Well. Like, you know, composite structures. There's a reason why Starship moved from composites to uh, stainless steel. Right. Partly it was because they could iterate faster, but mm -hmm. also people will tell you that composites have failure modes which are not necessarily obvious, right? Yeah. They're going to fail, and you won't understand until the moment they fail. Mm -hmm. uh, as, uh, you know, the Titan submersible people will uh, would tell you. If, if, yeah. Right? Oh, yes, geez. as the people who who testified about the Titan submersible, right? Oh my gosh, what a mess. Yeah. So anyway, COPVs, you know, you can damage them in subtle ways because of this composite structure and it can fail, surprisingly. Um, and there's a famous example of a Delta II launch that was carrying GPS satellites. And it took off in 15 seconds after takeoff, the solid rocket motor just unzipped completely and the oh, rocket wow. was destroyed. And they basically traced that to, they had changed, someone on the ground had optimized the way they were moving the boosters around for attaching to the side of the rocket. 
they had this new like system where it rolled on like a trunnion system and that would be a point of contact which would run along the side of the rocket applying pressure hmm. and that just weakened that spot ever oh, so no. slightly <laughs> and it wouldn't have mattered if it was a steel casing right. but it mattered because it was a composite casing interesting so you know people that think they're just making things easier and maybe don't understand the situation it can just fail again in catastrophic ways well, hopefully they don't have that problem again, but you know, they've had quite a few problems this year with um, losing ships over yeah, and over. Yeah, losing ships, those are all separate problems in all interesting <gasps> yeah. ways. I mean, what? That's so crazy. And, and like some of them are like engine problems. Some of them are vehicle structure issues. Yeah. Uh, plumbing issues, potential harmonic issues right. with the plumbing. Right. There's so many things in a machine that's got that many moving parts and it's, uh, if you can afford to keep paying for it, it's fine. Yeah, but right. But if this was a NASA program, you sure. could tell by now the people would be shutting things down because you can't fail that much but with public money. With NASA, wouldn't it be like so much more expensive and so much slower? Well, at it the would same be time? expensive and slower because they would have done a lot of these yeah. tests before. I see. Yeah. Right. When do you think Flight Ten will be? I mean, it's obvious. It's in the coming months, but yeah. it's not three weeks. You know, multiply everything by two to three and you get roughly there. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, these timelines are always made with like, if everything's perfect, this is how long it'll take. Yeah. Well, when I interviewed you in 2022, yeah. when I was still pretty new on my channel, I asked you about, you know, the feasibility of catching a booster with chopsticks. And we both kind of laughed like, is this, you know, this seems crazy and then they've done it. And so, yeah. You know, they're certainly making progress. They've done it three times now, but right. they just need to get that darn ship to work. And then they have to catch that. <laughs> and then they have to catch yeah. that, right. But you know, they've, they've made the V1 ship work, right. which I was not even sure. Like back then we kind of knew that the belly flop would work at that point. Yeah. The question was then how would the heat shield work? Yeah, right. And the heat shield, well, we've seen those leaked photos from the inside of the ship that landed. Uh, yeah. It's right. still a work in progress. Sure, and they unfortunately haven't been able to test, you know, these new experiments because yeah. <laughs> that freaking ship just keeps getting lost. Yeah, like an engine exploded yeah. and then another engine exploded, lost its nozzle. The entire engine blew out. That's what happened in the second one. And then they uh, lost attitude control because of right. like, I don't know, blocked thruster ports with water or something. I, think I really I thought Flight 9 was gonna make it. I actually really did. It yeah. was, it got so much further, right? Yeah, but we, it's just put us back to where they were on like flight yeah. four. Yeah, right. What do you think about all the people criticizing like the Starship program right now? Uh, you know, they're like, a lot of this criticism is being cast as if it were a government entity getting taxpayer money to do all this. And right. it's, it's a private individual. Yeah. They can do whatever they like, really. Yeah. And if they choose to test that way and they feel it's the best way, more power to them, right? Well, and you have to look at the other half of, you know, what they're doing with Falcon 9 and Dragon and they're massively successful. So. Yeah, it, and it wasn't successful right away. You know, no. They took a while to solve the landing problem. And even after that, they still had some stuff, you know, with like the Amos 6 that was sort of unexpected and yeah, things happen. Yeah, that was an entirely new mode of failure no one had ever heard of. Things happen and... Because they were pushing, they were like, well, we can optimize right. our uh, helium storage if we chill the tanks by sticking them inside the liquid oxygen tank, right? Yeah. And of course, people are like, oh, I don't know about that, putting composites in liquid oxygen, that's a really bad idea. And of course, all those people when Amos 6 happened, they were like, see, I told you. Yeah. It's a really bad idea, but you know what? We've flown hundreds of flights since then right. with the tanks in the oxygen, uh, you know, with the COPVs in the oxygen tank. Yep. It's been fine. It was a problem that got solved. You just had to push past it. Yeah. Densified propellant, that was another gamble. Yep, Which right. uh, experts said, it's not worth the trouble. You know what? They did you it. You put the trouble into it, now you're hundreds, you've, you paid off the cost of that extra research over hundreds of uh, flights. They not only did it, they brought in an ex SeaWorld employee who I interviewed at his house in Maine oh, hey. to talk about how he helped them super densify liquid oxygen. Nice, okay. So, you know, it's, it's really cool that 
I mean, I just thought it was so interesting that he was working at SeaWorld, uh -huh. trying to help them with their own issues, um, and then found a job at SpaceX. Hey, you know, like it, there's a range of skills, which, uh, you know, first of all, you, you know, people with skills are useful, but people with uh, talents can apply right. those to whatever job they're in, right? right? I guess what I'm saying is like, you yeah. can learn stuff on the job and you can bring some experience with you, but you know, yeah, you just have to turn up and, and execute. And so thanks so much for watching this video. I just wanted to share this update because we really haven't heard much from SpaceX about their massive effort to adapt the launch pad into a static fire test stand, but they're finally posting about it. And hopefully we see that tomorrow or on Thursday of this week. So I will be bringing you coverage of that as well. But thanks so much for supporting Ellie in space. I have a lot of fun videos on the way and hopefully you'll subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video.